please welcome Lissandra Alonso and Viggo Mortensen. Yeah. <laughs> Lissandra, this film is a... Oh, <laughs> oh, there we go. Um, this film is a little bit different for you. Um, there's more dialogue um, and more historical backloading. It's a period piece, so I was wondering if you could just talk about that a little bit because it's a kind of a departure. Well, uh, probably it just that kind of more dialogue in, in the film came from because I started working with the poet Fabian Casas, which is a close friend of Vigo, and I think he he just started uh, to create characters and, and dialogues, whatever it, it has to be, uh, I mean, strongly, yeah, I mean, with the film or not, but uh, I think uh, he did. And the thing was that, that from my last film in 2008, Liverpool, I just stopped like uh, for five, five years and I didn't know how to keep going doing films. And I just realized that I need to investigate or feel curiosity about new tools, new, new ways of doing things. And that's why I met Fabian Casas and, and, and I was especially interested uh, in writing with him. And, and through him, we start to talk with Vigo and Vigo get involved in, 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 all, in, in, all the, in all the process in the film. Um, Vigo, had you had were you familiar with uh, Lissandra's earlier films with Los Muertos and uh, La Libertad and Liverpool? Yeah, I was, and mm, like most people that saw those movies, uh, you know, whatever your take on them might have been, uh, there's no question that you're looking at the work of a, a singular filmmaker, you know, and uh, I think with those movies, as with this movie, even though it's a uh, step forward, not only that there's more dialogue, but there's a maybe a stronger narrative through line um, for a lot of reasons. Um, the fact that, you know, there's Danish spoken and that in, it's not just the language, but, but also sensibility, the humor, uh, in terms of gesture also, the, the movie accomplishes something that's very difficult to do. I mean, if you set out to do it, we didn't really. It was just like, we're just trying to be true to what was written. But in the end, it's a movie that's as Danish in its sensibility as it is Argentine, which is a pretty neat trick, you know, <laughs> to pull off. And, um, you know, I, th I thought even before, I mean, we met in 2006 at the Tor Toronto Film Festival briefly. Uh, he was... We were both there uh, at that time. I think I was presenting A La Triste, no? A La Triste, uh, uh, a period movie uh, set in 17th century Spain. And uh, I was uh, showing Fantasma. It's kind Fantasma, of a follow-up yeah. to Los Muertos. And, um, you know, we got along and all that, but then we didn't see each other again for another five years when he came by the set of a movie called uh, Todos Tenemos Un Plan, Everyone Has a Plan, that I was shooting. It was the first time I worked in Argentina on a movie. And, uh, and the story sounded, you know, really intriguing. And uh, the reason I liked his filmmaking that he'd done, that I'd seen before, and why I like this movie so much is that it's not, it really isn't like anything else, you know? And it's hard to be original and to stand out without being um, mannered or, you know, even pretentious, I think. Uh, and I think that his, uh, I th he, he doesn't do retro filmmaking. It's not, ref it doesn't reference, uh, as f that I can tell, consciously any, any filmmaker or any movie. I mean, there's a lot of things you can compare it to. And there's a, at least for me, uh, I have a desire to find connections to other things when I like something, you know. I guess some people who are 
mean-spirited, try to find connections to put things down, too. But I, I generally make comparisons only when I'm really interested in something. So there are things that you can compare it to, but it, it, it really isn't like anything else. And, and for me, working with you, I, I find that the way you are, which is direct and unaffected in your dealings and working, you know, talking and with people moment to moment, is the way you, you shoot the way you plan, the way you shoot, and I think the way you put the movie together in the end. So, I mean, it's, there is no other filmmaker like Lisandro, and I'm you know, really happy to be in this movie. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we open it up, I just want to um, ask you both if you could talk about another member of the creative team, Timo Salmon and the DP, because... Um, that's another that's reason why it's a big jump, the way it looks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's another another man that I I just I, he he just get involved in this uh, in this film. He who was not in the previous film. I was uh, really impressed by the last film from Aki Claudius mm -hmm. Maki, and Timo create together with Aki like the whole career of Aki, I guess. So, yeah. and we just have a, a, a mutual friend, and I just asked this guy Michael Weber from the Match Factory yeah. sales agent. And ca can you just tell him that uh, I really uh, want to want to work with him or something like that? And he says, "Yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah, I will." And I thought, uh, "Well, that is never going to happen." But uh, suddenly, I receive an, e an email from him saying, "Okay, w when do you want to shoot?" And blah blah blah. And he takes his own 35 millimeters camera and travels from Portugal to Denmark mm -hmm. in, in his car just to have uh, the first week of shooting which the last part of the movie, we just shoot it first in 2012, and then we wait for a year until continue shooting the rest of the film. So, and I thought, okay, he's not gonna come to Argentina, but uh, it's fine. And suddenly he says, okay, yes, yes, I'm going. Uh, and, and it was fantastic, uh, and I learned a lot. And I learned a lot because he has a kind of different approach to, to, to frame things and to, to the way he, he, he used to, uh, to record, I don't know, it's the right word, the, uh, the way he puts the camera, but I see it as a plano, contra plano, how do you say that? Uh, well, his, I mean, cutting, I mean, the way he yeah, he's cutting, okay. planned the shooting, <laughs> or, uh, <yeah>. or tried <laughs> to suggest. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, he likes to cut and to have the close up when the people is talking, w one, you know, in front of the other, which I, I never did that before. So at the beginning was, mm, I'm losing something, but then I, I, I just realized that it was much more better for the film. Mm -hmm. And the but way it took you the, um, the first day where the yeah. idea that you would have a more than one setup yeah. was kind of a shock, right, to the system. Yeah, yeah and I, just <laughs> uh, I was pretending, okay, 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 let's do it the way you want, but I will never use it, you know, but just, you know, uh, <laughs> Just to be nice, but uh, at the end, uh, and it happens with some of the scenes, and Vigo, uh, I also learn a lot from him because he just told me, okay, just do it. You don't have to use it, you know, but... Uh, There's no shame. I won't no tell anybody you did another <laughs> shot. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody will, will say anything against you, you know. No, nobody will notice that, so... And after, uh, during the editing process, uh, I, I just use a lot of those takes, you know. And I think it, the, the film is it, it's something different from the other ones I made because of that. I mean, he not only came, but Timo was studying before. He'd never been to Argentina, but he was studying weather patterns and weather maps and uh, all the photographs he could get a hold of of Patagonia and other places in Argentina and different uh, seasons. Yeah. He was really studying the light. I mean, he approached it really scientifically, you know, and then he came and and added his, you know, marvelous light, which really, you know, there's the same raw kind of naturalism right from the start that, that's characteristic, I think, of Lissandro's movies, where you're really, it's a kind of a sensory immersion. Mm. Whether you're resistant or not, you, <laughs> you kind of get pulled in to these landscapes. But there's something about that theatrical lighting of Timo's that in a subtle way kind of slowly pulls you into a, a kind of a meditative or a dreamlike state, you know, without being forced, you know, like seemed to complement your style really well, I thought. 
Yeah, the film, you wouldn't call the film painterly, but it's a painter's eye that's composing the color. It's just, yeah. it's really something. Let's um, open it. Yep. Wait, wait for the mic. Hi, I'm Matteo Sancho from EFE News Services, and I would like to ask Vigo Mortensen, how could you define that half, Dan half Danish, half Argentinian sensibility? I mean, you are more or less that. Mm -hmm. And I, is, is there a problem of confronting both identities or both sensibilities? Thank you very much. Um, well, I mean, it's hard to be really specific about it. I could illustrate by saying in Cannes, where we had the world premiere, the row I was sitting in, uh, I sat with the two actresses from the movie, Gita Nabu and, uh, and uh, Vilbjörg Maling, and some family members and some other Danes. And our row was laughing like most of the movie because there's something about <laughs> the character I play and the relationship with his daughter, of course, that makes him, not that you don't get that watching it, no matter where you're from, but there's something uh, particularly Danish about this guy who is sort of a, like a Don Danish Don Quixote in a way. You know, there's this kind of stubborn insistence on, I guess, sort of a Northern European perspective uh, on trying to make sense of everything at all times. There must be a logical explanation. There is a way to resolve these issues, not only to find, you know, his daughter, but to make sense of what people are saying and what people, you know, people say we're going to do this at this time and, you know, we're going to have a meeting and we're going to talk about these things and then, of course, being a strange land for him and strange people, maybe there will be a meeting and maybe it will happen at that time and maybe those things will be discussed, but maybe nobody will show up either and maybe if they do, something else will be discussed. And in a sense, the character is, is the audience, <laughs> I think. It's a, you know, I always, I, what I found amusing and why we were laughing during the screening is because you can really see this guy like a good, uh, responsible Dane military officer to boot trying to figure out what the hell's going on, you know? Um, all the way until, I think like the audience, <laughs> by the end you just say, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm gonna still keep going, but I, I'm not sure I know where I'm going or who I am or, you know what I mean? Um, I, I love that. Um, and I'm not really answering your question, but <laughs> it's about language, as I said, it's about humor. Uh, there's also a historical perspective that most Danes will have when they see this movie. Um, there are, you know, if you, as is the case in many Westerns in the United States, uh, they often happen during or within 10, 15 years of the, of the U.S. Civil War. And uh, Americans, uh, you, uh, North Americans have a particular point of view about, uh, you know, just historical references, uh, cultural references in terms of North and South and what that conflict meant and the, the echoes it still has. And the same goes for Danes as far as the wars that they fought in 1848 and 1864 against the Germans. Uh, from which comes that song that he's sort of humming, singing along as he's riding horseback. And there's a lot of other elements, not just the way he's dressed, but his, his attitude as a Dane out in the world has a lot to do with that historical period. So there's, there's just many things that, that I think we did right. And it was a, like a, a group effort, you know. There was the perspective for Argentines that has very much to do with that historical moment, even though it's not a documentary. Argentines have a point of view of what the uh, the, mili the genocidal military campaign, not unlike what happened in North America, Australia, and other places in the world, was like. What the cultural echoes to this day are from that period, and so there's, from the Argentines' perspective, it's rich in what it suggests, and the same 
for Danes, I guess, you know, as audience members. I think that's about the closest I can get without getting into a whole thing comparing it to other Danish movies or something. Well, I mean, from the perspective, the historical perspective, um, maybe you could go a little bit. I mean, you, you talked about it briefly when I asked you the first question, but uh, what does that campaign mean to, you know, Argentinians today? What is, what is that memory? Actually, I'm not the right one to talk about that because uh, I, I didn't read a lot of books about uh, that time, you know, but uh, it's in, 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 in a common place. I mean, it's in the air that, uh, like in everywhere else, I guess, that some people, you know, kill some other people. And uh, I thought that there was, actually, I started thinking the film in, t in terms of locations where I wanted to shoot. So I, I have to find an excuse to, to, to create this, this, this show in, I mean, to show these places. And, and I think because I like these places w which are like very isolated. And I thought that uh, put it in the, in, in the past, I mean, in the period movie should be better for me also to change the, the way I'm th shooting things and understanding the cinema. So uh, we create with Fabian this kind of all period movie, but it's just an excuse. Act act actually, it's very artificial. Framework, yeah. And if you see our Indians, the it's it's like a comic book, you know. It's a, it we we doesn't want to to be precise about anything, yeah. and uh, also because I in terms of uh, history, uh, history, his character probably should be like a, an English guy, but uh, because there were a lot of them on on our place. But I think it there are pockets of skin of Danes in certain places still. Tandi. Yes. Yes. But it's more common. Yeah. There's more common that there's an English component to. Uh, you can understand why probably, but uh, um, yeah, I just wanted to wait, get away from the from the books, and I think to to put a Danish father with the daughter over there, it should be more unique for the film, so people will not be doing comparisons about the historical, historical, uh, historical time, is the way you say? The, the tempo historical, I, I don't know. So that people will make uh, the usual references to Anglo-Argentine history. Yeah, about the dress, about the way they talk, about what they talk, about what was the communication with the government or with the military guys or whatever. And I think uh, we did well, I guess, or not. It, 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 the English had con colonial aspirations in South America. The Danes didn't. I mean, they were yeah. <laughs> couldn't. Well, they, ha they have the Falklands already. You know, yeah. So they, they, they are there around. You know. And all kinds of English street names all over Buenos Aires, at least. Well, right. Yeah, what? Yeah. English street names. English street names. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Yeah. And a lot of uh, yeah. soccer teams have English yeah. names also. And yeah. Yeah, but th because I didn't want to put him put the film in that place, I just yes. want to just get away f a little bit from that yeah. and create uh, some something more unique in the world of, of the film itself. Yeah. So, uh, yes, th all the elements. If you if you are from there, you can read them in in, in in the film, but it's not what the film is about, probably. I don't know, or maybe I don't know. <laughs> I think it helps that there are things, whether it's the clothes, and obviously the places, and some of the words, you know, some of the uh, vocabulary from the period. I think the fact that you're really specific about many things allows it to have a more universal application. You know, I think it's that unwritten rule of art, the more specific you are, the more universal yeah. the story will, will be, the more uh, relevant it will be to people yeah. everywhere. But do you remember w when we were like in Spain, like year, days ago, I mean weeks ago, and it, it came s this Russian girl, you know, and she didn't realize, w w where is that place, you know? Yeah, it was great. She it doesn't understand that it was Latin America, South America, or it can be like, a, she thought it was in some other place. It know, was an so actress uh, who had never left Russia. She was probably, how old was she? T early 20s, maybe, right? And she's in a Russian movie that was being presented at the San Sebastian Film Festival a week or two ago. And, uh, and we ran into her the day we were having our screening. She said, oh, I'd love to see your movie. And so we got her tickets. She said, well, make sure you go because, you know, it's sold out and this and that. And she said, oh, I will, I will. So she went with her director or producer or something. And then we ran into her the next day when we were doing interviews. 
And I said, did you go? And she goes, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and what did you think? She goes, it's great. It reminded me of this place. I think she was talking about some place in Siberia or you know, yeah. somewhere over the Urals or I don't know. And uh, it really reminded me of that. And where is it? Where is this place? Yeah. I mean, anybody who <laughs> knows anything about South America was clearly it's Argentina. But yeah. it's great that she didn't know and it didn't matter. And she goes, I love the story. And I... I felt so close to this young girl, and I understood how she felt about the landscape and the look in her eyes and the way she moved through that landscape as opposed to the father who resisted it. I mean, she had a really interesting take on it, and it made no difference where and when it took place for her. Well, uh, actually, to be honest, she doesn't understand Spanish or Danish. No, no, she was just watching this. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. She barely could speak English to it. <laughs> <laughs> and my Russian's rusty. <laughs> but as long as we were, t- we're talking about specificity, there's a, the historical specificity, and there's the specificity of light. And then when you talk about, you know, words like when you use words like location or landscape, I think that in your case as a filmmaker, we're talking about something very different. Because I, I have the impression that for you, landscape is inch by inch. I mean, you're, you know, you're, you're. you're you're talking about, you know, every turn, every twist is something that you know you've carefully selected. Yeah, I, I think if, if you, uh, well, first how of all, how many miles, how many kilometers did you drive to find all these places? No, hola. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, it was th- it doesn't it doesn't matter actually. But uh, yeah, I travel a lot, like five five thousand know, from one location to another. At least was six hundred, or three two thousand. But uh, I we shot in Denmark, which is much far away. But uh, the way I start thinking in, in in a project is just traveling to the locations where I want to shoot, and then I see people around, or I just start writing about anything so uh, that's the the way I, I like to start thinking about the the idea about shooting in some places and then I have to put some humans in, in the screen right. just just yeah. to shoot the places yeah. but yeah and actors and uh, yeah, you yeah. Know. but uh, <laughs> uh, no but seriously I think uh, if you see the film, you you can feel how how the how the different locations start uh, playing w- with the character at the mm-hmm. same level. So because this guy start in the middle of the ocean, I mean in the in the ocean and start uh, and finish in a place which is nearly like that, mm-hmm. which it seems like the moon, or, you know, and I- and his head is already there in the way I see the film. Mm-hmm. So I think if if you find the the right locations as a, as a character to take the location as a character can help a lot to the audience to understand uh, what is happening with the character, or maybe not, I don't know. Mm. And the character in turn illuminates the, the landscape too. Yeah, Just how isola- yeah. how isolated the character is, and w- what he needs, and what he d- is trying to find, and what he oh. will. And also in this case, it's not just what you see as you get in your other movies, but it's what is said, yeah. particularly by the older woman at the yes. end. She's talking about a landscape that's more an impression or a memory that could or could not be a Scandinavian landscape. She's talking about this sort of almost a dream or a nightmare about blood running down the cliffs to the sea Mm -hmm. at the same time that she's talking about very specific things like a little boy Mm -hmm. and a dog that follows this boy because, you know, dogs like to have friends and and this little boy is playing with this little girl and it's all at that point in his state of exhaustion and not just from the physical exertion that we've we've as an audience members i think lost track of how long has it been yes uh yeah. so is he obviously but also a just a a mental exhaustion from trying to comprehend and as i was saying earlier it makes sense of what he's seeing and now what he's being told and she's speaking, and it's he's flashing as one does when someone's telling a story on himself as a boy and a girl and the one who ended up being his wife, maybe. But also, she's talking. Sometimes it sounds like 
he, she's talking to him like uh, his daughter talked to him, you know, and who knows if it, his mother, I mean, it's just, in some sense, she's all women and no women, and he's all men and no men, and this is all landscapes and no landscape, you know, but to get there, you know, conceptually, it's fine to say we're going to go here, da, 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 and we're going to end up in that state of mind and place. To get there as seamlessly as he does it is an amazing feat, really. Uh, uh, I think that even the most hard-bitten, festival-frequenting, cynical <laughs> <laughs> film writers, <laughs> in spite of themselves, I think, for the most part, from what I've heard, are transported. Even if they end up rejecting it, there is something... I mean, I defy anyone, unless they're hammered and just pass out, uh, <laughs> to walk away from this movie and not have those last 10, 15 minutes stay with you for, for days, you know? And s along with that comes the rest of the movie, because those 15 minutes make you look back, make you ask, I mean, whose dream is this? Is it a dream? What does it mean? I'm rejecting what happens at the end, but why? Well, what do it, what's my, you know, why am I reject? why do I have this feeling about, in other words, questions that one asks oneself. And like the best filmmakers, I think Lisandro does what, for example, in my experience, someone like David Cronenberg does, asks lots of questions, doesn't give you any answers, respects the audience, and they're basically making a story to please themselves, which is the way an artist should make his art, I think. Um, and I, I think it, it does stay with people. I think they fight it. I've, I've seen the people who have written one thing and then written again about it a couple of weeks later and had a different take on, on the movie, or there's been more thought, more thoughts come to them, or more, um, in some cases, comparisons to other work they've seen, or or something has clicked, and then they might have changed their mind. Well, maybe that's not true either. You know, it doesn't really matter. The fact that it stays with you is, is in itself of value, I think. Yeah, and actually, it seems like we are talking nonsense here, but uh, about the film that nobody understands. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, it's, it is the truth, you know? <laughs> I think uh, it's it will take. And the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all but nonsense. It's all true. Yeah, I think it, it will take some. Some. I mean, not not because the film is is difficult. I think the film is. I think it's easy to 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 interpret it, to read it, and to uh, to feel it, or whatever. But uh, there's there's some kind of intriguing thing, and the film it it's go changing from one place to another. That at the end, actually, when I just put the at the credit at the very end, I didn't know h how to 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 explain the film. You know, when it's the more easy question that the, some friend came to me and said, "What the film is about?" No idea. Well, you're not you're not well, under any well obligation to do so. Well, yeah, but I can <laughs> say it's a love <laughs> story. You know, it's easy. Yeah. But uh, and the the, g the best thing on it is to that I really don't have uh, what the feel I mean I know I, c I have my feelings but uh, I, I cannot precise like in two seconds or in two minutes what the film is about and that's uh, the thing that I more enjoy about this new film which is different from the other films I made that maybe I can explain in a shorter time what the film is about but uh, I, I'm starting to 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 talk in terms of cinema that uh, I'm starting to enjoy when when I'm have when I have to ask me questions during the screening and say where this guy is trying to put me as an audience, you know, why he decides that and why he's you know, and and I I think is it's uh, there's a, l a lot of 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 good values in a film that can make you feel like uncomfortable. I mean, n not fu fu furious, but uncomfortable in a good sense. When the film is not like a like a s sex or porno film, you know, it's like a film like it, it, tr it tries tries to be beauty and tries to tell a simple history, but I in, a, in a different way and with a different with, the, with a different uh, perspective from where you probably see like 
every day in TV or on, or on the multiplex or whatever. So I, I'm I'm quite happy with the w- with this film, and I guess maybe a couple of years I will know what the film is about. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. The aspect ratio. Yeah, we can talk about that. <laughs> Actually, we, we composed the film for I- in a radio of 185, which has framed all, all the film like that. But then during, during the, editing r- the editing process, because from the lab, they just sent me the, the, the frame with the wrong mate, you know? They just put mate like this. On, so I asked him, okay, just send, me the send it to me, like a full frame. And then I start editing the whole film like that. And I decided that uh, there was the right perspective or angle to to approach the film. Otherwise, with with the more wi- with some more like narrative uh, aspect of radio, people will try to see another kind of film. I guess, you know, especially if it's bigger with with the gun and the horse uh, against the Indians. You know, they will try to <laughs> uh, maybe or maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong, but to to see maybe expect some more action film or some other kind of film and to put this all radio uh, ratio 183 thing um, as as a, as a first you know as a first frame in the, in the film i think it al- already like suddenly take you I- in some other place like in the old films or in other kind of of i don't know s- sensation i don't know how to say it in english i don't know if i was clear or not uh, but uh and then we reframe some of the of the takes and the pictures and everything. Of course, Timo Timo Salminen at the, at the very beginning was not happy about that, but then we we just made some color correction and he get used to the to the frame and he start talking about okay and now I get it. it's it's a little bit like old western for Sean Ford or whatever blah 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 blah. <laughs> And she really liked it like that. And actually, we have both format, 185 and, and 133, but I think it's never going to be used, the, the 185 format. I think also because it's better for just to fill the skies and the, and the, whole, the land and the, the Patagonia, and how, how alone this guy is in the film, and you can really feel like uh, there's no way out from that place. Sandra Vigo, thank you very much. Thank I you. just want to thank, before you no. go, I just want to thank, of course, yeah. you, the festival, no. and but Ilse, Bernie, and mm. Ryan, who is helping us to and supporting a lot with the film. Thanks, guys. Okay, bye. Thank you.